In this video, we're going to attack some more complicated trig integrals. These are actually really important, and you'll see soon. These are some of the bases for trig substitution that you'll see. But then also when we get into polar and spherical coordinates later on, you're going to see the application where sine and cosine show up a lot in our integrals. You're going to need a lot of different techniques. This isn't going to give you the whole swath of, of how to attack difficult trig identities, or trig, trig integrals, excuse me. But using these, you're going to see the general techniques techniques. These general techniques can be applied to different um, integrals, including tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. In this video, though, I'm just going to focus on these three and show you how to use it with sine and cosine. All right, in this first example, I'm going to generally talk about how to attack the integral of trig functions when you have an odd power. This is important and can be used with cosine, sine, or other trig functions when you have an odd power. The first step you're going to do is to rewrite this as cosine to the fourth times cosine. So you're extracting, so you're at odd, you're extracting one of these powers to where you'll get an even set of powers and then this, this cosine or sine or other trig function to the one power. So this will just let's look like this. Again, no, not doing any substitution or anything crazy at this point. All I'm going to do is separate this function into this right here. You'll see the main reason in one second for why we do that, but I just want to kind of give you a little bit of a heads up. The reasoning is we can write this as a factor of cosine squared because it's even. You'll see that. But then as importantly is this right here is going to help us do a u substitution with sine. Because if we let u equal sine of x, then du is going to be cosine of x dx. But first of all, what I'm going to now play with is that even power of cosine right there. I'm going to write that as cosine squared of x squared. And then I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity right here. So cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. So this statement right here, which is the same as cosine to the fourth, is 1 minus sine squared of x squared. So that is the setup. And now all I'm going to do is a u substitution. I'm going to let u be sine of x. If u is sine of x, as I said a second ago, what I'll get is that du equals the cosine of x dx. So what this then becomes is the integral. I'm going to have to change my bounds here, my limits of my integral here, becomes 1 minus u squared squared. The cosine of x is my replacement for du right there. And actually, I'll do this uh, also with my bounds. So I have my u is sine, so sine of pi over 2, well, that's equal to 1, and the sine of 0 equals 0. So I get my new bounds from 1 to 0. At this point, I'm just going to expand this and use the anti-power rule and evaluate it with my, my bounds here for my, my definite integral. But that's the main trick, and I just want to quickly review that again. If you have odd powers, what you do is separate one of those, and then you're going to use the Pythagorean identity on this. And again, this would work exactly the same if you were working with sine to the fifth, where I'm going to be doing this u substitution of some sort inside of here, using this extra little factor that I pull out to, to reconcile that du switch that I need to make. After that, it gets pretty straightforward. So then to finish this up, what I'm going to do is just expand that expression. So now I'm from 0 to 1. It's 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth now um, du. And then I'm going to use the anti-power rule and evaluate from 1 to 0. So I'll get u minus 2 thirds u cubed plus 1 fifth u to the fifth evaluated from 1 to 0. Plugging in a 1 has no consequence here because they all have uh, a variable here. So all I have to do is evaluate when 1's plugged in, giving me 1 minus 2 thirds plus 1 fifth. Writing these all in terms of fifteenths, 15 fifteenths minus 10 fifteenths plus 3 fifteenths would give me 8 fifteenths. So there we have now a method for attacking odd powers of trig functions. Let's now talk about even powers of trig functions. 
All right, so when attacking even powered trig functions, importantly, we can't pull out a factor um, to do anything useful because that would give us cosine cubed plus cosine. And, and there's nothing wrong with the cosine dx that we have there, but it's the cosine cubed that gets awkward to play with. But what we can do is use this formula right here. So what I'm gonna do in my first move is I'm going to think of this as cosine squared squared. And again, this will always work. You can use this anytime this is even. If this was cosine to the sixth, you would write it as cosine squared to the third power and it will work out exactly the same. So again, if I'm thinking of this as cosine squared squared, um, what this will become is this statement squared, right? Cosine squared or this squared. So this becomes the indefinite integral of one half, one plus the cosine of two x squared dx. Then what I'm gonna do is just distribute this power here. I'm gonna apply the power to the one half to make it one fourth and pull that out front so I have to think about it. Then I'm going to square this expression, which is this uh, foiling action that needs to happen. So I'll get one fourth the integral of one plus two cosine of two x, and then this factor squared, so cosine squared of two x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply that power reducing formula again to this. And the only little adjustment, and hopefully you can see it pretty clearly, since I have cosine squared of 2x, this factor inside here is always two times that. And so this, this factor, when I write it, will be cosine of 4x. But that looks just like this. So I have 1 fourth, the integral of 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x, plus one half, and actually I'm gonna distribute this one half too just to make my life a little bit easier. Um, it doesn't do much, but just makes, it takes one step away here. Uh, one half cosine now of four X. And before I finish this, I wanna make it clear why we're using this technique. The entire game is we don't have any definition on, on how to integrate trig functions that have these powers, though they're gonna show up often, as I spoke of earlier. In this case, what I've done from here to here, using this formula twice in two different places, I've taken this expression that's cosine to some power, and I've rewritten it to where all my factors, all, all my terms, excuse me, that have cosine no longer have this exponent. And then I can actually directly attack them. As you're gonna see in a second, what I'm then gonna do is take the antiderivative of these will be the only real interesting thing outside of these constants that I have to deal with. Um, and when I do that, I'm going to use a u substitution for this inner function, but I'm actually gonna do it without explicitly writing this. And, and this is an important point to show at this point too, but, but let me get there and I'll show it to you what I'm doing. So from here to here, all I did was just put my one and my one half together to get three halves right here. I'm going to attack these. And, and again, I, I'm gonna use a, a bit of an informal substitution here. When I do this, when I apply the integral to this, and, and again, you could write out all these steps and maybe you want to verify yourself that this actually works. Um, what I could do is say u equals 2x, and then I'll get this factor uh, of, of one half out from doing that right there. And that's not a huge deal. Whenever we, you have linear substitutions we talked about before, so 2x, when you differentiate, you're just gonna get a factor of two. It makes it easy to swap out this dx. Um, but because I don't wanna deal with these separately, what I'm going to know is that instead of thinking of this as a u substitution, I'm just going to know this anti-chain rule idea that whatever I get here, if I had something like the sine of 2x, that 2x on the inside would make it multiply by two. And so in ways, this is kind of like the anti-power rule. What I'm going to do is when I, when I integrate this, I am gonna get the sine of 2x, but then I'm gonna divide by two, which is that extra factor, extra factor that came out there. And again, this is not necessary. I could split this integral up over each of these terms and show those steps. But for me, the focus is this stuff, 
And I wanted to introduce this as like to make your life nice as you get into gnarlier integrals, you want to be able to kind of be quick at this. And this is a little informal mental U substitution for these linear factors. And again, this does not work if you had something like 2x squared. That gets much more complicated and you actually have to do a physical U substitution. But I digress. Here we go. I have this one fourth outside here. And that's going to be multiplied by this, uh, now 3 halves times x using the anti-power rule. Now in this case right here, what I'm going to get is the sine of 2x, and I'm going to divide by 2 to get rid of that coefficient there. And a fun just little check you can see, if I were to, to differentiate sine of 2x, I would get cosine of 2x times 2, so that this is the antiderivative of that right there. And then in this term right here, I'm going to do the same thing. This will be sine of 4x, but then I'm going to divide by 4. So this becomes 1 8th sine of 4x. And again, when you're first getting used to this, you can think of differentiating. This would be cosine of 4x times 4. If you multiply 1 8th times 4, you do get to that 1 half right there. So a couple little tricks right there, but big picture just to recap before I do my third and last example for this explanation or this lecture is that if I have even powers, what I'm going to do is use this power reducing formula for either one of these. They'll work the same. And as you see these formulas, you can see that everything's going to be almost identical except for this plus or minus in front of that cosine of 2x type thing right there. I do that and I'm going to keep on using that power reducing formula until I get to terms that are all of these trig functions to one power. It doesn't really matter what happens inside here. And you'll see as you do this, you're just going to get a 2x, a 4x, an 8x. Um, after that, what I'm going to do and what I suggest for these type of problems to make your life a bit easier is to try to use this mental U substitution with these linear factors. And again, what that means is keep it as 2x on the inside here integrate the outer function, or I think the antiderivative of the outer function, and then divide by that, co that coefficient factor right there in each of those cases. And then in the other, t in other case, if it's an odd power, I wouldn't be using the power reducing. Instead, what I'm going to do is separate that one factor, then use that even factor and this Pythagorean identity to write it in terms of, of cosine or its sine, vice versa, and then use a U substitution to finish that integral. All right, in this last example, all we're going to do is kind of see how those last two strategies can be put together. In this case, we're looking at a case when we have cosine to the sixth and sine to the third. Generally speaking, if you have a combination of cosine and sine, where you have an even and an odd, what you want to attack is the odd. This is generally the easier of these two methods, as you've seen in the last two, right? The, the, the method for the even is you're breaking it up and it can kind of expand a lot, especially with larger powers. The game, the, the beauty is dealing with these odds, pulling off that extra factor and using U substitution. You'll see how it works beautifully here. So what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this um, by pulling off one factor of sine right here. Again, setting up a U substitution. I hope also you can see that when you do that, um, the game right away would be to think of a U substitution where U is the cosine of x. Because if I get the cosine of x, then I can do a replacement with this sine of x right here. So I'm going to have u equals the cosine of x, which gives me that du equals negative sine of x dx, or in other words, negative du or negative 1 times du equals the sine of x dx. And hopefully you can see that again, right? Why I was saying I was going to use cosine of x is because I get this sine x dx, which is going to let me make the substitution um, right here. So that extra factor I pulled off. You might be thinking then, well, what about the rest of this jazz? Well, a trig function, specifically sine and cosine in this case, to an even power are easy to manipulate with any of these right here. So it's the odd powers that are the awkward part. It's not too awkward now that you pull off this factor. Now I have even factors here. I have this, which will help me do this substitution. So what I'm first going to do here real fast is before I make this substitution here and show you all that together, I'm going to rewrite this sine squared, this one right here, in terms of 1 minus cosine squared using that first Pythagorean identity. And my setup for that is this. So as I stated, 
This is going to be my du part right there, and then the rest of this is where I'm going to actually substitute in this definition of u right here. And so, with all of that, that's really the tough work for this problem right there. It was doing that odd move right there,、um, and now what I get is this is u to the sixth. This then is one minus u squared. This gives me my substitution、uh, for du, so I get du, and I'll put the negative out front here. Then, as you can see, this is pretty straightforward. Now, all we need to do is、uh, just distribute this. So I get u to the sixth minus u to the eighth、uh, in terms of du. This is now just a, a anti-power rule; has really nothing to do with trig functions at this point. I'm going to bring back in the trig functions, but this becomes negative. Uh, this is one seventh u to the seventh minus one ninth u to the ninth plus c. And finishing up to put it in terms of x, all I need to do is take this and replace the u with a cosine. I'll distribute this negative two, so I get negative one seventh cosine to the seventh x plus one ninth cosine to the nine x. Plus c. And then to finish this video, just because I think it's interesting, and, and to me, if I'm watching this, I'm like, "Okay, Mike, that's a lot of fun, weird manipulation." But is that really the antiderivative of that statement? And just for fun, what I'm going to do now is differentiate that, doing this check to verify that this is the antiderivative of cosine to the sixth times sine to the third. And so again, differentiating this to see if this comes out to my original expression right there.、Um, this isn't too difficult to do this work.、Um, this is the power rule. I bring that seven down, and then the chain rule. So when I bring the seven down, what I get is just a negative one out front here, and I get cosine to the six x. Then I multiply that by the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, and so I'm just going to make that a positive, and then sine of x. Exactly the same thing over here. That nine comes down. This becomes a one, and I get the cosine to the eighth times negative sine. So there is the derivative, but I don't feel confident this is exactly the same thing as that. But just to manipulate this, it's not going to take much work. What I'm going to do is, out of each of these two terms right here, I'm going to factor out a cosine to the sixth and sine x. So actually, this term right here will become a one, but it、uh, obviously has an effect over there. So I'm going to take out this cosine to the sixth x times sine x, and then I get、uh, inside here. So that's one for that term here. I have a, a subtraction now with that negative.、Uh, the sine's gone, but I have cosine squared. And maybe you see it at this point. This, by the Pythagorean theorem, is、uh, just sine squared. So this is cosine of the six times sine times sine squared to give me the cosine of the six x times sine cubed, proving our work on this problem. Again, my final thoughts are: this is not supposed to be the gamut of all the possibilities that you can see, but these are the three general strategies. When you have these odd powers, think about pulling off one of those those factors to get an even power times this thing where you're going to do a u substitution. When you have even powers, what you're going to do more of is playing with these right here. In fact, you might see yourself actually use a combination of of, of using these power reducing formulas and the Pythagorean theorem, depending on what. You're looking at, and it's not just with sine and cosine. It can happen with the other Pythagorean identities and all the other identities. Though, to be quite honest, like moving forward in applications, again with with polar coordinates, spherical coordinates, or, or other things, even when working with vectors,、um, sine and cosine are the most used, and these kind of examples would be the ones you really need to know how to do.